Thank you. All right, so <laughs> everything we talked about this morning was kind of sexy and fun and like, oh, wow, groups. I've never done Facebook groups, right? You learned a bunch of stuff. Making NMD in four months, it was so exciting. I, I got really excited. Did you guys get excited? Yeah. So I'm going to talk about the not very exciting stuff. This is like when you get really, really excited about, you know, moving, and then you forget you got to pack. You got to like pack up all those boxes. That's not the fun stuff, but that's how you get into the new house. So how you get to NMD, whether it's four months or four years or 10 years or whatever it is, you have to learn to play small ball. And my daughter's really a big athlete and she loves baseball. And that was the first time I started hearing that term small ball. You guys Giants fans in here? Any Giants fans? So the Giants won the World Series this year playing small ball. And what that means in baseball and basketball are kind of two different things. In baseball, what it means is that you don't have any really big hitters on your team. And you're going to have to, you're going to, have to win with base runs. And I think in the whole World Series, Bob, would they, they hit one home run? One home run in the whole World Series, the Giants did. And they, they won the, the World Series. So you don't have to be, I made national marketing director with no superstars yet. I had, I think Kirsty Tom had just come on my team. She was just a sales coordinator. And I, I made national marketing director. My daughter, Jake, made NMD in 10 months, didn't have anybody beyond a sales coordinator on her team. So if you learn to do these little tiny things like the Giants did in basketball is when you don't have any big guys and you have to use the small forwards and you got to be fast. And you got to learn the real drills. And John Wooden is a guy that really stresses this, no matter if you've got superstars on your team or not. It's the little details that are vital. Little things make big things happen. Right? So we're going to go over those little things today. Did everybody print out their customer genealogy or pull it up on their computer if it's too big to print out? You did that? OK, because we're going to get into that. But the first thing I want to do, and I know this sounds silly, but I want to make sure you guys know how to place a T120 order. And the reason I know that some of you don't know how to do this is because I've had you on the phone <laughs> and you don't know how to do this. So everybody pull up their uh, uh, virtual office. If you don't personally have a T120 order, I want you to place one for yourself right now. Does anybody have a T120 order to place for somebody else today? No? OK. Who's got one that they need to place for themselves? We should all be on T120 orders. So it should just be coming out. If you don't have it for yourself, you're not going to know how to do it yourself. So everybody pull up your virtual office right now, either on your phone with a bandwidth. Well, just try. Some of you are on cell. Just try to pull it up. So you could, you could use this sheet and, and look at this, but what you really want to do is be on your virtual office. And so if you're doing a true T120 order, it's all going to be on installment. And you're going to have one order of the trio, right? Now, the only distinction would be if it's a children's health study order. And that would, then you'd have to split it up. But otherwise, you've got capsules. And then you're going to order four boxes of complete. Now, if you put a four, say they want variety. Say you want variety. And you put four in the box, they're going to think that you made a keen error. And they're not going to send it. So what we do to split that up is, first of all, everyone should have at least one of their boxes coming as a sample pack. Right? Unless, do you have them in Canada yet? You just got them. So everybody should have one of their boxes be a sample pack because that allows you to take it with you and it allows you to share it with people. So you don't have to put them into little baggies and make you look like a drug dealer. <laughs> so, so everybody should have at least one box of variety single packs. I have some people that just like the single packs because they don't get all over the counter. The next thing that you want to have is if, you're, if you want everything variety, you can get one variety, one vanilla, and one chocolate. And now you've got four boxes of complete. Okay, does everybody get that? All right. I just did this with a senior sales coordinator. He thought that we were placing one box that came every four months. Don't do that because then you have to check in. Just like Dave said, we don't want to have to keep selling them every month. We want them to buy in. And when they have that much product, they're going to use the two shakes a day. They're not going to get stingy with it. They're not going to go, I'm going to run out. And they're also going to start sharing it with friends and family, especially if they have the little sample packs. So make sure that you know how to place that order. And if you don't have one yourself, place it today before you go home. So everybody got that? That's easy, right? OK, next thing is you got to know how to fast track. And it's different in Canada. And that's one thing I don't want us. 
United States citizens to feel badly about yourself. It is a little bit easier in Canada, and I'm learning this because Jake's got a leg going up there. They don't have to have a rep to fast track. To make sales coordinator, they only need two VFs, and of course the VFs don't have to have reps, so it's a little easier and a little faster, and they have more points, and they don't have to have seven households. So when you guys, do, and I'm nothing against the Canadians, I'm married to one, and I've got three kids that are all Canadian, but it's a little bit easier up there, and when you build it in the United States, if you follow our structure, you got a little bit more stable base. Now, that doesn't mean the Canadians can't do it, but you have to do it. You have to have seven households. You have to have a rep. So by the time you make sales coordinator, you've got on your team at least five reps, right? Instead of in Canada, you've only got two reps. It's a little bit stronger, right? So don't feel badly about yourself, but you can do it just as fast, and we're going to show them, aren't we? Yes? So you need to know the rules in the country that you're working in. So make sure that you know the rules in Canada if you want to work in Canada, and make sure that you know the rules in the U.S. Who can tell me the rules in the U.S. for making VF? Not you. <laughs> <laughs> you with the kale hat on. Um, so seven households. Seven households. 2,000 points. 2, points. And one representative. And the representative cannot be in your household. And they have to have one order, and they can't be in your household, and they can't use your credit card to pay for it, and those seven households all have to have seven different credit cards, right? And what's the other piece? 60 days. 60, what? What, Jay? Right, so the billing address on the credit cards all has to be different. All has to be different. They want you to have seven real households. If you've got 60 days to do it, people do it in a weekend, people do it in an afternoon. It's really easy to do. Um, and you can only have how many points from Tower Garden? 600. Right, and that's your own personal. And you can, yeah. No, you can have 600. Yeah, yeah. You have to have at least 500 personal. Yeah, but you can have up to 600. And only 600 can come from Tower Garden. Okay, so we, do we have that all straight? So here's what I want you to do right now. Pull out your tracker that's in your pack, and here's the 2,000 plus tracker. If you are not yet a VF, or you have someone on your team that's tracking to VF, we're gonna fill this out. Now you can do this as an Excel tracker. We're gonna do it as a PDF document right now. So I don't care if you're a 100 Club National Marketing Director, I want you to put your personal customers on here right now and learn how to use the promotional PVC, okay? Yep, yep, right now. So if you've got your preferred customer genealogy with you, you can pull the information off that. We're gonna do something much better with the preferred customer genealogy. But right now, I want you to all be doing this. And if you have already finished that, you can go on to the qualified business. Now, I wanna say one thing about the qualified business before you guys just let loose is that a lot of people think that their business is qualified because it says 1,000 on their PVC report or on their virtual office. That do, technically, you are a qualified business, but you don't get the promise of a qualified business just by having that number. For example, if you have 1,000 points, you get to count your dealers and your DDs in addition to your own personal customers, right? But you don't get the retail sales profit on your DDs and your dealers. So you're not making the $350 to $700 that we promise that you'll make with a qualified business. And you wanna make sure that you get real about that because someone gets a qualified business, this happened to one of Trisha's reps, and she only had personally three customers. So she was only making a, about 100 bucks, and she was mad. So you have to have your own 1,000 points from your own personal customers. And not only will you not make the money if you don't, but really, isn't that what you're after anyway? That's 15 Transform 30 customers in the US. And don't you want to have at least 15 people that you're helping? Yeah? OK, so we're going to take a couple minutes. Let's complete this. And I know if you're still looking up that you haven't started. And I'll know that when you look up again that you're done. So it is our responsibility to make sure that our, pay, that our customers are paying their bill. And oftentimes, their credit card number changes. They leave their credit card at the last restaurant they ate at. I do that occasionally. Or they have a new credit card because they got a new expiration date. 
Now, I know that some people who are very organized, when they take an order, they actually write in their calendar when that credit card is going to expire so that in 2018, they're reminded that they need to renew that person's credit card. And you could do that if you were that organized. And that is the smartest thing to do. However, I pull a preferred customer genealogy starting on the 20th of every month, and I pull it usually every couple of days. And what I'm looking for first is I'm going down that third column. Does everybody have their preferred customer genealogy? So you go down that third column, and the first thing I'm looking for are what? Ds. The third column from the right, guys. So I'm looking for Ds. Now, this is a, this is a, um, a distributor up in Canada. She's pretty new. She doesn't have any Ds at all. That's awesome. And I know one thing that the ninjas have done is they've really cleaned up their declines. Because what happens when you get a decline is that your customer, after 30 days, goes to collections. And they are really mad. And you and all of your upline loses anything you've ever been paid on that order. And you probably have such a mad customer, they're never going to buy from you again. So it is in your best interest to clean up those declines. It's your job. My dad was a salesman, and he always handled his accounts. So his company paid him ahead of time where they didn't pay the other salesman. The company paid you ahead of time. So do your job and make sure that, that you take care of them. And usually it is just something weird with their credit cards. Not that they don't want Juice Plus anymore. It's a great opportunity for you to invite them to an event. And you can just text them. You can just say, hey, girlfriend, I think you've got a new credit card number. Um, can, I, you know, can I call you and get it? So just, that's the first thing to look at. The next thing you want to start looking at are C's. And when you see a C by something other than a tower garden, because you'll see a, a C after a tower garden, because that's not a recurring order, but if you see a C after, first of all, I look for CR. CRs is a children's research. You should never see Cs by the CR, especially not within their first year. But I never want to see that because they're missing out on this opportunity to take Juice Plus for free for four years. So you want to right away get into communication with those people. One thing that's happening is that some people don't explain to people up front really firmly there are three commitments to the children's health study. And one is that they use it for a minimum of one year. Don't like gloss over that. You know, you want to make sure they know they're committing for one year, okay? The next thing that I'm going to look at is how many of these people are only on one product? They're only on the trio, or they're only on Orchard and Garden, or they're only on Shakes. Does the distributor themselves not have an order? Like, I think there's a gal up here who doesn't have an active order for capsules. So when people say, I'm taking Juice Plus, I'm like, really? Because you have not gotten a shipment for eight months. Like, you know, how do you know that? And they're like, well, I forget to take it sometimes. So that's when you want to really get into relationship. This document right here tells you everything about your customers and everything about your distributors. So you really want to get familiar with this, and you want to teach your downline. The last thing that you can do with this preferred customer genealogy, which is kind of tricky, and Destia, where are you? We, we did this together when, when uh, she was gone for NMD. You can figure out what your volume is going to be at the end of the month with your preferred customer genealogy. So a lot of people are just crossing their fingers that they're going to make you know, their volume, right? So you have a PVC report, which tells you how much volume you've done. And then you've got the preferred customer genealogy. And this tells you what's going to process this month. That is the, the column that's fourth over from the right. Do you see all those dates? So today is the what date? The 15th? Today is the 18th. So everything that's processing after the 18th, the 26th, the 28th, the 30th, the 29th, the 21st, the 26th, I underline those, and I use this handy-dandy little guide that comes at the front of your preferred customer genealogy reports that tells you what all those things are, because after 20 years, I still don't know. So I refer to those, and then I refer to this guide that shows you the PVC, and I actually go through and divide all of the PVCs by four. So I know that TRIO is 4238. So I, if I've underlined that one, so I've got this guy right here, the top one, she's got C3 um, S2, which is a child's portion. In the United States, if I was looking at that, I would know she's a, an installment, that would be 4238. I would total up all those numbers for each of the reps, that's how much business they're going to have that month in addition to what they already have on their PVC report. 
And that's how much volume you have if you don't do anything new. So then you can figure out, oh, I need 10 more T120 orders to hit my volume this month that I want. You see, it's not like, it's not, you know, some kind of guessing game. You can actually know what your volume's going to be. Is that news? Some people are like, wow, really? Yeah, so that's how you can figure out what your volume's going to be at the end of the month. And if you're not clear about that, see me at lunch because that's kind of an advanced topic. But my 27-year-old daughter can do that like that. And I think most of her team can now too. Can't you guys learn how to do that? Yeah. yeah like that. Just like that. <laughs> it's made me get all my reading glasses out. So I have these things copied and I keep them in a binder so I can just pull them out. Yeah, that's right off the virtual office. It's on the virtual office, yeah. And it's on your tracker. You just have to, all the money is on there. You can just figure it out from there. Okay, so next thing I want to talk about is your home page on the VO. Do you know there's a little highlighted thing that says my team and business at a glance? You know what that is? Do you click on that pretty regularly? Yes. I like to click on it every day because <coughs> I like to see the numbers go up. And I'm looking at the graphs down below. So when you tell me that you think your business is going really great, I'm just going to look at your graph. And it's going to show me the last three years. And if your numbers aren't going up like that, or at least like that, if they're going like that or like this, you're doing fine. But you're not the rock star that you think you are. So you want to really look at those numbers. And you're going to have some months that maybe dip. But in general, if you took a straight edge, you should see a steady trajectory, right? Always, on, I mean, if you're doing, I mean, you're spending the weekend up here, right? You want to be growing your business, I would imagine. So you want to see those numbers going up in all of the categories, your income, your pay line, your new distributors, your new customers. The other thing that I look at is there's a whole list of who's close to promotion, who is close to five customers. Those are all telling things. That tells you who's doing business on your team. And one of the biggest things that I see for my team that's happening is especially in the summertime, our new reps in our organization are kind of like in the summertime, they're kind of like this. And what that says to me when I hear that Joss is over in Europe signing up nine new frontline reps, he's 19 years old, that we could all be doing that, right? Joss is 19, he doesn't have the world experience that most of us have. And if he can do it, we certainly can do it. So what that tells me is that we are not being authentic with people about how excited we are about what we do, right? We are not genuinely sharing ourselves in a way that someone would want to join your team. I mean, shouldn't you be having that much fun and being that fulfilled that people would want to come do what you're doing? Whatever it is that you're doing, I want to do it too. Don't you want to be that kind of a person? So get familiar with this My Team and Business at a Glance. It's really an important page to get familiar with. Um, so let's talk. We've got about five minutes left, I think. And, oh, no, we have negative two minutes left. Um, so, so really quickly, 90-day game plan and DMO, super, super important. We've been talking about this forever. You've got the 90-day sheets in your book. First thing that goes in is, the next conference coming up. It's exactly 90 days from today. So that goes in there. Okay. What else goes in there? All the events that are coming up that you guys have planned, that the Pacific Northwest has planned, that you personally have planned. Maybe you haven't planned them yet. Use lunchtime to get them planned. This is where your DMO goes. What is your DMO? What is it? What do you guys do? Well, I don't know. You know, do you get up every morning and spend 30 minutes recruiting people on Facebook? I don't know. So we only do four things, right? We do four things. What are they? Share we share our product at every opportune moment. Share we share our business whenever it's appropriate, which is all the time. <laughs> we promote for events. And we, and, we get, and we attend meetings and trainings. That's all we do. So here's a sample that Mitra wrote up back in November. And if you look at every single one of these things, which you all probably got back in November, they all fall into that category, 10 techs, customers, and new people. So what are you doing? You're sharing the product or the opportunity at every opportune moment. So everything on there is our DMO, right? So get a strong DMO. If you've got one day a week, what's your one day a week plan? Have your plan. We don't have a boss in this business. Your calendar is your boss. And if it's not full of stuff that's, that would tell me that you're going to make your goal, then you're not going to make your goal. So what's that 90-day plan? 
Um, Richard Branson is someone I really admire. He says, think small to grow big. Keep your eye on the bigger picture, but don't slip on attention to detail. And this guy is just a mega superstar, just has created just an amazing, amazing brand by taking care of the little things. So we have, um, in 90 days, we have something really exciting coming up, something really exciting planned for you. Do you all have your tickets? Yes. Yeah? So we're all going to Nashville in 90 days. So you've got the rest of July to finish. You've got all of August. You've got all of September. Could you take on a blitz? And like Jake said, could you do 50 to 100 texts a day? Could you? Could you all get carpal tunnel by October 15th? You could. You could. But I just want to ask you, you've got 90 days to get ready for this. And you really want to ask yourself, because you're the only one who can answer the question, is who are you going to be?